Hello everyone and welcome back to the Out of the Park Developments YouTube channel. My name is Alex Murray, also known as AZ Axel, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial about batter ratings, how to be able to understand what each of those ratings does in Out of the Park. There's a lot to cover, so if you've got your OOTP games open, let's jump right in. All right, for this tutorial about batter ratings, we are going to be on a player profile, of course, and we may also be optionally going to the ratings tab. So if you've got your OTB games, let's go ahead and jump on over to a player really fast so we can uh, follow along with this video. Now, the most important part about batter ratings is understanding what each of these five different categories do, and you can see them on your screen right now. That is the contact, the gap power, home run power, I discipline and avoid Ks. Now, you may see something different on your PT mode, but for base game, this is what you will be looking at and observing and needing to understand before you understand anything else. So we're going to start here. So let's start at the top. Contact. Now, contact is not an individual rating, technically. Contact, if we go to the editor tab, is a combination of a rating called BABIP and the avoid Ks, and a slight influence from power. So you're going to see that some players are going to have higher or lower contact based upon how good their avoid K is, their home run power is, and a hidden rating referred to as BABIP. And that is something that we have added to our newest version of OTP in the PT mode. You can see the BABIP rating on those players. But in base game, you cannot as of this time. So BABIP is going to be the number one influencer for contact. Number two is going to be avoid Ks. And again, home run power is a very, very small influence. But what that indicates is when the batter puts the ball in play, basically aka contact, BABIP is batting average on balls in play. That's the abbreviation's extended, na extended name, BABIP. Base, uh, I'm sorry, batting average on balls in play, BABIP. So we want to kind of figure out what contact is going to look like depending on each type of different player you get. And we'll talk a little bit more at the end about what types of batters to watch out for and what you need to be thinking about and processing when you look at a batter. But just know and understand for now that contact is going to is going to be majorly done by BABIP. It's going to be influenced somewhat by avoid K and very, very small influence from home run power. All right. So in conjunction with talking about contact, which is basically how often the ball is going to be put into play because it is contact and how well they're going to be able to put, you know, the ball in play. Let's talk about avoid Ks next, because that's going to be a bigger influence on contact than you realize. Avoid K is a rating designed all about how well the player is going to be able to resist striking out. Now, this doesn't guarantee contact. It may mean that they take more balls that they would have swung at instead, but it does indicate that they will go deeper into counts. They will not strike out as often if that means their fouling pitch is off. That's what they'll do instead, but they won't strike out as often. If this rating is very low, they will strike out a lot. If it's very high, they will strike out very less or limited. They will strike out not often at all. Another one that's similar to avoid K is you're going to be your I discipline. Like we're kind of going backwards, but this is the best way to understand it. I discipline is going to be how often a player takes a walk. It also can be an influence upon how well the player sees pitches and targets certain pitches to try to swing at versus avoid. So a good counter to this would be a controlling pitcher with high movement tries to put balls right on the edges of the strike zone and if it's just over the edge of the strike zone a little bit a player with you know very low avoid k's would swing at it very high eye discipline may be able to resist it since it's a ball so having a player with high eye discipline is actually a very good thing in the game that will give your batter better chances to be able to actually put the ball in play on a pitch they like. It will also give them better chances of being able to get on base with a walk, which is just as good as a single for most people. So keep a good eye on your eye discipline is what I'll be able to say about that. Now let's talk about power, and that's going to be a combination of gap power and home run power. Now let's start with gap power. Gap power is going to be how well the player 
can be able to turn singles into doubles and triples. Basically, when there is contact, gap power is going to ensure that the player gets doubles and triples. That's basically the des designation of gap power. That's going to be able to take uh, a, a contact hitter and make them into a line drive hitter versus a ground ball hitter. And we'll talk a little bit about batted ball profiles and the other batting ratings in a second here, which we'll go into about that in regards to their power ratings, all right? But gap power is all about turning singles into doubles and triples. Based upon their speed, it'll be triple or double. This is going to be probably one of the more weaker ratings. A lot of people don't really care about gap power. You can, if you have a stadium that is designed for doubles and triples versus singles, also, having higher gap power may be an indication that your batter is going to be more of a fly ball or line drive profile hitter versus a ground ball profile hitter because ground ball profile hitters turn into double plays if the opposing defense is good enough. So there may be a situation in which two different people who have the same contact, but one of them has gap power, and that makes them a line drive hitter, would be better than a ground ball hitter with the exact same contact. So thinking about what you're looking for from batters is going to be important and how each of these ratings influences not only your the results of the player, but the, the, the profile of the player is going to be important. Lastly, home run power. This is basically converting contact into home runs. It's really just that simple. This is going to be a rating that's designed to, based upon the contact of the player, the rating they have for home run power is going to indicate how many home runs they have during the course of a regular season. So you could have a very high contact hitter and the home runs do come out of the amount of times they put the ball in play. Now, a homer is an instant run. It's a very good thing in baseball. It's one of the best results you can get for offense. So power is a very highly treasured and sought after result from a hitter. So don't think that this is a bad thing, but just be aware that when you have somebody who has medium or low contact but high power, that's going to be an indication that they're going to hit a lot of balls out of the park, but they're not going to get a lot of hits in addition to those balls hit out of the park. Home run power, while it does influence contact slightly, is not an additional contact rating on top of your contact rating. It simply takes contacted balls and converts it into homers, much like gap power takes singles and converts them into doubles and triples because of how well they have gap power, all right? And that's a little bit of a back-end engine little insight right there for you guys. Remember that basically the result comes in as a hit, and then the gap power and home run power indicates whether or not it's a single, a double, a triple, or a home run, all right? And that's all based off of the contact, which is I discipline and avoid K, because we have to first figure out if it's going to be a strikeout, a walk, or a ball put in play. That's really your three results. The ball is hit, or the ball is missed, and they strike out, or the ball is let go, and it's a walk. That's really the three main outcomes of a game, and that's what the, the OOTP is going to do. Is It's going to start there, and then your result is what follows after that. So let's talk about the other batting ratings, which is basically your profiles. Basically, batted ball profile, ground ball tendency, and fly ball tendency, and what that means for your batter. So... Batted ball profile is basically the game looks at the profile of the player based on their contact, gap power, and home run power, and not I discipline or avoid case, just those first three. And with the information of how good they are at each of those, it's going to give you a profile of what this person is most likely going to be. It's going to be either a ground ball hitter, a fly ball hitter, a line drive hitter, or I believe there's also neutral as well that you can get. These are not something that you can set up for the batter. These are all based off of what their ratings are like on their player page. So you cannot change these, okay? You can't change the profile of your batter that is generated based on their ratings, all right? So if you've got somebody who's big into home run power, they're most likely than not going to be a fly ball hitter. Their job is to have launch angle. That's basically their design. 
if you've got somebody who's high gap power and not high home run power, they're going to be more line drive hitter at that point. And if you've got somebody who's high contact but not exactly very high gap power and not high home run power, they're going to be a ground ball hitter. They're more likely to look for shooting balls into the, the gaps and through the holes in the infield and get the singles in that way. So make sure that your batted ball profile fits the spot in the lineup that you want a player to be in. If you've got leadoff hitters who are fly ball hitters, they may not be as successful at getting hits than a ground ball hitter would be. It's much easier to get a hit for a ground ball hitter because there's more defensive positions to have to cover multiple parts of the infield, and it is easier for defenders to field fly balls than in, in than uh, ground balls in the infield. That is proven. It's proven in OTP, all right? So keep that little nugget of information with you right there. Fly ball hitters are really good if you have people on base and you want to do sacrifice flies or if you want to get doubles and triples, all right, or home runs if you've got sluggers. They're, they're really there for home runs. Line drive hitters are going to be very, very, very good for staying out of double plays and putting balls into the gaps for doubles and triples, all right? They could also line out to an outfielder. That's also something that can happen. They're not exactly great for sacrifice flies, but they can do that as well, especially if a fielder has to make a diving catch or some phenomenal play in the outfield to make a grab. So being able to understand what each of those profiles looks like and how that will influence your team, especially where they are in the batting order, is going to be important. So that way you don't come up with a situation where you need a sacrifice fly to tie the game and you've got an extreme ground ball hitter against an extreme ground ball pitcher. And you're just literally going to watch the ball get put into the ground. The runner is not going to score, and you're going to be down to your final out. You know that, That's the worst feeling in the world when you realize your batting order is not set up correctly and you have a ground ball hitter where you should have a fly ball hitter or you've got a fly ball hitter where all you really wanted was to put the ball in play someplace where it's easier to get a hit. You know, So keep an eye on that and be able to use that correctly. Now, Ground ball tendency, the one right below that, is basically when the batter puts the ball on the ground, this is going to be whether or not they pull it, they spray it, or they go away with it, or they're normal or neutral, if you want to call it that way. So some batters are pull hitters. This is going to be more so for the defense to be able to set their defensive alignment up to match what the batter is going to be. So again, make sure that if you sign a new free agent player and they're an extreme pull hitter on ground balls, the infield might just shift them over to the you know, left or right, depending on upon if they're a left-handed or right-handed batter, and that will take away a good little chunk of their ability to hit the ball on the ground to that side of the infield. So it's good for defenders to know this information. There's also fly ball tendency right below that same situation, whether or not it's a pull hitter or a spray hitter or normal. Um, you'll be able to, as the defense, use that information to set up your lineups or your, your alignments correctly. And that covers all of the batter ratings in our game. I hope that this video was very helpful to all of you out there in learning how to get started with out-of-the-park baseball. We will continue to upload more tutorials just like this one and more in the future. So please do subscribe to this YouTube channel, and I will see you all in the next one.